Dear Slovenian entrepreneurs from Slovenia and other countries from all the world, welcome to the first webinar organized by Slovenian Business Club and Slovenian Global Business Network. It is the first one. We wish in the future to organize more digital events to connect excellent Slovenian entrepreneurs from homeland and diaspora. By stronger connection between both groups of Slovenian entrepreneurs, we believe the power of Slovenian entrepreneurship of global markets will be even stronger. Small, strong. Go around microphone. Goran, we can't hear you. Uh, okay, thank you. I will start again. This winner entrepreneurs from Slovenia and other countries from all the world. Welcome to the first webinar organized by Slovenian Business Club and Slovenian Global Business Network. It is the first one we wish in the future to organize more digital events to connect excellent Slovenian entrepreneurs from Holland and diaspora. By stronger connection between both groups of Slovenian entrepreneurs, we believe the power of Slovenian entrepreneurship on global markets will be even stronger. Small but strong should be our common goal. Spoštovani slovenski podjetniki iz domovine in sveta, dobrodošli na prvem webinarju, ki ga skupaj organiziramo Slovenian Business Club, klub slovenskih podjetnikov in Slovenian Global Business Network. Ker so danes z nami tudi podjetniki s slovenskimi koreninami iz različnih koncev sveta, dovolite, da današnji webinar nadaljujemo v angliškem jeziku, tako da se bomo vsi med seboj dobro razumeli. Today our first guest is Mr. Vladimir Dobosh, CEO and co-founder of IPTE company in Belgium. The company employs 870 people, of which more than 40% are engineers and is engaged in the supply of automation solutions and test engineering for the electronics and mechanical industries. It will be an excellent opportunity today to talk with Mr. Dobosh after his presentation. Conversation with our guest will be moderated by Executive Manager of Slovenian Global Business Network, Mrs. Mateja peroshek Chukini. Let me share briefly with you some information. After this event, we will send to all of you a video of the webinar. You are also more than welcome to share today's video with people who might be interested in this topic. The contract, the contact of our guest, Mr. Dobosh, will be sent to all of you for any future questions as well. Before we invite our today guest, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Jurek Nes, the president of Slovenian Business Club, and Mr. Stefan Bogdan Schale, the founder of Slovenian Global Business Network. It is the first common event. It is a special opportunity for welcome speeches of both organizations. So I ask Mr. Jurek Nes for the first one. Uh, hello also from uh, my side. I am very happy uh, to uh, host this first uh, event. Uh, of course, uh, it would be much nicer if we could uh, meet in reality one day. Uh, but uh, um, since we are spread all over the world, this is anyway a perfect uh, a chance to contact. And um, I think the inter internationalization and the, um, the access to, to markets, uh, the communication and the connection uh, to, uh, between each other worldwide uh, is one of the key facts uh, where our companies are struggle, uh, struggling. We have many... Uh, exciting technologies, we have great companies, uh, and uh, I believe uh, it would be a next level uh, to know each other. Uh, actually, I didn't uh, know about the company from Mr. Dobosh uh, before, and uh, I'm really looking forward to learn about it, and uh, I hope this will be really one of the first uh, uh, events in the, in the series. Uh, where we could connect, see how we can help each other uh, and see uh, how we can uh, maybe address uh, common opportunities. So, um, welcome again. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jurek Nes. Uh, Mr. Schale, it is time now for uh, your speech. The floor is yours. 
Dobar dan, vsi lepo pozdravljeni, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. First, uh, thank you very much to Chairman Knes and uh, Director uh, Goran to accept uh, this, this uh, suggestion. Uh, we come together, uh, we all around the world are Slovenian business people. And uh, let's make a business. Let's understand that we can be, we can improve our business relationships with a good business result. So, and everything was already uh, spoken and done. So, let's start. And thank you very much, Mr. Dobosh, to come uh, to join us on, on, our, on our first meeting. So, let's do, let's do and go and start with the business. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shale. Before we start, I would like all of you to switch off cameras and microphones because uh, we will uh, try really to to focus on cameras uh, to speakers. Uh, Mr. Christian Ver Verbich, I would like to ask you to switch off. Thank you very much. Uh, so I suggest uh, Mrs. Peroshek Chukini, who will moderate the main part of today's events, to invite our guests. Uh, Mrs. Mr. Vladimir Dobos, so Mrs. Uh, Zucchini, the show is yours. Thank you very much for your my introduction, yes. uh, Director Goran mm -hmm. Novovich, uh, Dr. Jure Knez, and to all Slovenian Business Club team. We would like to thank you for helping organizing this gathering today. It's our great honor to be a part of this project, and we believe that we join force of both organizations, uh, with our knowledge and contacts, we will achieve high goals. As Mr. Goran said, it's our first webinar, but we hope on many more yet to come. We believe on great success of this cooperation on promoting business opportunities between Slovenia business diaspora and Slovenian companies. So ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to invite our special guest of honor, Mr. Vladimir Dobosh, thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon to you. And how are you doing today? I'm, uh, I'm feeling a little bit excited. I must be honest to say that. Um, I'm, uh, I'm very well for the rest. Thank you, Goran. Thank you, Matea. Thank you, Sasha, for, uh, for organizing this. Um, my name is Vladimir Dobosh, as already said. I'm a Belgian person. I'm born in Belgium, but my father was Ukrainian and my mother is Slovene from Slovenia. And in that sense, I'm, uh, I have a very good contact with Slovenia. Um, I'm uh, the CEO of IPTE. I'm also a shareholder and I was in the beginning there as one of the founders of the company. Uh, Thank you for letting me presenting the company to you. And I'm honored also that I'm, be, I'm the first one in all these sessions which still have to come. I will just start with my presentation of the company. The company was founded as ITE, but now it is IPTE, Integrated Production and Test Engineering. So we are an engineering company with multiple branches, with multiple daughters we do engineering we do test solutions we deliver solutions automation solutions and we integrate them in the full project that's the mission a company needs a mission and our mission was is to be a global player which is a big word because global is very big but we do uh, want to be uh, independent we don't want to be linked to another group. Uh, we still have the decision power in our hands. And we want to be an automation partner. Now, also partner is a nice word because we like to be that. However, sometimes we're just a supplier. I will go back to the starting point where we started it and then explain you a little bit the history because I think it's, uh, it's an interesting story. It was interesting for me. And I want to share it also for you. So, as maybe mentioned, as you heard before, I uh, I was uh, I was working in Philips, and before that I was in Alcatel, and I did my studies in Leuven as an engineer for electronics. 
So I was working the first year in the technical side. After joining Philips, now we, we are developing automation solutions for the Philips factories. And in these days, Philips still had a lot of factories, but what we saw is that the production facilities of Philips were decreasing. Philips wanted to get rid of all their investments in production methods, in production uh, lines, and they wanted to become a marketing and a sales organization. Is now, the, Mr. Der Roche, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Could you just put on the full screen the presentation, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank I you. Hope, uh, I hope that everybody sees it now a little bit bigger. But as I said, um, Philips was going down, and we saw that. And at a certain moment, we said uh, with, the, with the team of the founding members, we said, "Let's let's try it by ourselves, and let's conquer the world with our solution." So in '92, we started with five. We went really fairly quick to turn 12, 13 persons, and we started under the name Integrated Test Engineering. Test Engineering, because that was the speciality what we had. Now we, we put our own savings together. We asked the same amount for the banks, and with that amount, nowadays, if I calculated in euro, it was about 250,000 as a total, but in that time it was, of course, relatively more. We had, we could live for 10 months. And then the job was to find the projects which we could realize because we knew how to do it. Now, then I discovered the real world. It's different if you come in, a, in, a, in a, at a customer with the name Philips or you come with the name ITE. Anyway, we had, we had success after a couple of months. And there was a first project, not in Western Europe, Eastern Europe. And then there came another one and another one. And slowly we, we went off. It became very clear, and that was already the first two years, that we would not be successful if we would stay in Belgium. And why are we in Belgium? Because we were Belgian citizens. That's the only reason. So we went to the UK. We started IPT UK, ITE UK. There was no talking about Brexit. There was no talking about, uh, let's say, uh, big plans to, to, to have border taxes. We just saw a possibility there to create a lower cost entity because the UK was lower in salary price at that moment. We went to Germany, Nuremberg. We had the chance to acquire a part of Grundig Automation, which was supplying machines to Grundig. We started in USA and in France because we saw some customers there which were interested slowly in ITE, IPTE. Nowadays it is IPT. 898, Asia Pacific, which was actually Singapore. At that time there was a lot of business in Singapore. Nordic, clear. And then in Finland there was an interesting customer which is called Nokia. Um, so we, we focused on that. But what we saw at the end of the 90s is that we ran out of cash. Now, cash is that important? I tell you, when you start a company, it's one of the most important things which I also had to discover. So, what was the plan? We wanted to keep the company in our own hands, but we were too small to go on the listing on, the, on a public offering. It means we wanted to, to make the company public as we didn't want another shareholder to step in uh, by, by doing that, we would probably lose the control of the company. So what we did is we acquired another company, Connect Systems, about 60 million. We were also about 60 million and total under 20. We could issue a public offering that was then list, would be listed on the Euronext under the name IPTE. Um, that was a nice thing at that moment. It was just because the crash of the of the uh, of the Euronext. We uh, we could pay off all our loans and we had the money to go further, and that went well up to 
2008, when there was a crisis. I don't know if you remember that, but the crisis hit very well our automotive customers also. So there was an investment stop. And the board of the total group, so IPTE, under the name IPT, including uh, Connect Systems, decided to sell off again automation. In the meantime, automation was, had, had been grown, but Connect Systems grew also, so we were a bigger company. If you sell a part of a public company, you have to do it also publicly. So there were some, some parties interested in automation, but also myself and my partner, Vibar, who's actually the major shareholder, we, we propose to take over automation privately. Our intention was to continue the business, not to split it up and sell some parts, which the others were intended, but to continue it. Eventually, then the bidding or the decision was that we could take it over and that we could continue it. That was the start of a reorganization because we knew where the costs came from. So we reorganized IPTE, now an independent company, and um, the economy helped us when we started because there was a, a, a restart generally of all the economy. So these combinations made that we were already profitable in the first year. And profit, I don't need to tell you guys, it's also important if you do business. So we, we extended our competences. We still did some small acquisitions, but we grew up to a level of uh, 100, 100 million plus. What, what was happening is that Connect Systems, Connect Group nowadays, was still listed, but slowly we took over the shares from, uh, from the Euronext and we became a major shareholder of Connect Systems also, Connect Group. So in 19, we decided to do a bid on the remaining shares of Connect on the Euronext. And we succeeded. And nowadays, Connect Group is a daughter company of IPTE. I mentioned that because in the meantime, Connect Systems is a major business, has become a major business. And I want to show you some information about Connect Systems also. I'm not involved in Connect Systems as a CEO, I'm just involved in the decision making of IPT as factory automation. And our plan is to grow still also automation to a level of 100, of 50 million, no, to 150 million. I forgot to type there the zero. So, uh, we don't see your presentation in, uh, anymore. You oh. No. You see it? No. No. One second. Mm -hmm. They are correcting the situation. One okay. Second. No problem. You can continue. You see it again? Yes. Just put okay. On the Sorry. Sorry for no this. Problem. It's it's technology. <laughs> Summarizing IPTE, so the, the the automation part, we are in twelve locations in Europe and worldwide. Um, these twelve locations are in fact independent entities who do engineering and who build and deliver directly to customers. So they don't do all the same. We have test engineering entities, we have assembly entities. So there are specialities in these different entities. We have uh, more service stations. You have to imagine that we deliver not only here locally around this location, but we do it over all the world. We even are in Terra de Fuego, we are in Korea, we are in, we even have in Australia machines from IPTE. So it is important not only to supply the machines, but also to keep them working or at least bring them to work. 
It's important that the customer also gets familiar with what we deliver and that he takes over the ownership. So the service stations are very important if uh, to achieve that goal. As said in the in the in the previous uh, or in the introduction, we have a lot of engineering staff, 43 percent, which means that an important part of our team, of our total team, are engineers, are technical people. And I already want to mention that we are looking for more technical people. It is not evident, it is not so easy to find the people which first like to work in such an environment as we are, which is a high, relatively high tech environment, but um, also has a kind of speciality in our sector. So most of the cases we have to educate and get the people get experience in our in our business. We have 870 people, maybe already 900 because we are hiring people at this moment as the business is again revamping. In 2019, we had 125 million turnover. Last year, 2020 was less. I don't need to explain why. We had 110. But this year, the outlook looks that we will go back to the 2019 situation and even better, I guess that we are growing. The order entry and the projects what are coming are uh, indicating that we will go over the 125 million. What do we do? What business units do we have? We have a business unit test, which is yeah, a lot of electronics behind it. We test pressures, we test electronics, we test signals, a lot of things which are to be tested when you produce a product. I just showing you just a product that has been assembled on our machines, on our line. Now, if you put this in a car, in this case, this is a component for a car, you have to be sure, and that counts also for televisions or for mobile phones, before you deliver it, before you integrate it in another step of the product, the final product, what our customers are making, you have to make sure that this thing is functioning correctly. If you don't do that, and you always will find, you will have always mistakes because something is wrong, then you have dismantled the next product and take it out and repair it and do it again. Now that disturbs the whole flow of the production. To avoid that, you need to find the mistakes as soon as possible in your production process. So we have a test department which can give you the solutions for that. Systems is, an, uh, is a business unit which, is, which has developed and is still developing standardized machines. What does that mean? A standardized machine does a certain function but a certain flexibility for different applications. Especially if you go to a printed circuit production, you need to mark the PCB, uh, printed circuit, the PCB. You have to put components on it. You have to cut it in pieces because there are multiple components being made. And these machines, these functions that I described are realized in the division, in the business unit systems. The last one, the assembly, that is let's say more than 50% of the business what we do. Assembly means that we put parts together and make a product finally coming out of that line, which can be this, but which, which can be something else. So this assembly part is also a speciality of, let's say five, six of our locations. This is another way of presenting it. We have the business unit test, we have systems, and we have assembly. And the icons, what you see behind, beside it, these are the processes which we can do. I'm not going to explain you all this, but if you take systems, for instance, you see on the picture units or machines. In these machines, you can have the things, the functions which are mentioned be below the icons. It goes from simple conveying to the paneling, to dispensing, to lasering, laser marking. Just explaining you that when you produce a printed circuit board, it has to be it has to be given a number, an identity. Especially 
if this printed circuit board goes into a car, the car manufacturers are obliged or are asking to have a number on each component in the car. Why is that? Because then in, in, the, in the case that there is something wrong and they have to recall a hundred thousand cars, then they can trace all the parts which are wrong so that they know exactly on which machine or what date in which location it has been produced. So all these parts have to be marked, numbered, identified. That's the reason why they use, why we sell also a laser marking machine. And then below there is the assembly. And this all comes together to the circle, which means we, we identify the customers. We go there and we propose what we have. We go into the discussion with them and then say, what do you want? How is your concept? What do we have to offer? Where does it match? And if there is a match, if they say, yes, go, this is a project, then we start the engineering of it. We start building it. We start to purchase all the parts. And then we realize it in IPT in one of these locations. Customer comes for a pre-acceptance, for a first acceptance. We ship it, we install it at the customer, wherever it is in, in the world that he is, because our customers are also looking for, for places all over the world. And then we have to make it working. And when it works, then they have a final acceptance, and then we get 100% paid. So, and then the service comes afterwards. This is the way IPTE factory automation is working. This is another presentation of, let's say, a line, and I want to explain you shortly the different aspects. You see physically from the top or from the side, the, the below the line, uh, there can be operators or not operators, but mostly in a, in a factory, you see lines, production lines, uh, not, not so often U-shapes or, or different uh, setups, but in a line, it's very, it's very, oh, you can overview the line very clear, and you see the different machines. Now, this could be a project. On top of the project, you see some lines and some circles. What does that mean? The machines are connected to the circle in the middle, and that means that all the information coming from the machines, what has been produced, which type, at what date, at what, and, and what version comes there together. It can go up then to the, to the screen on the top, which means the customer has a data information system. He gets all the information of all the parts that have been produced and stores them. There is some team of people beside it which are handling all this. And this is the IT department, more or less the IT department of our customer. Then you have on the right side the, the, the tooth wheels, which means that there is technical maintenance to be done on software or on other things on the machines. And then it goes up and there are the software guys who are realizing or creating the different applications. And the cloud on the left side is indicating that you can even access the machines, if the customer allows it, from remote. So we can access our machines in China from China is maybe a difficult, uh, a difficult example because there is a firewall around China. But if in, in Australia, for instance, to see what the performance is of our machine and if we can upgrade it. On the left side, the, the programming techniques, uh, next seat is a programming language, Siemens, Backlog, Omron, and so forth. We are using robots. You see the names there. And to realize all this, of course, we don't do, we don't produce everything by ourselves. We also buy a lot of things, but for the make parts, for the turning and middle milling, which means to assemble the machines, we have our own machine shop. Not only in Belgium, also in Tallinn, and also in Germany and in Portugal. These are the markets. Where do we try? Where do we sell? We try, and we sometimes it's also fails. But important is. The automotive, roughly 75% of our business goes into the automotive business. It's not because I always like it, but because it's an industry where automation is a must. If today's cars would be assembled manually, then there would be no, not too many cars really running on the street because the quality of a car is the, is the combination of the total and if you see the complexity of today's cars, 
it is huge. So if you don't control that, if you don't do it in the same way, on the same process data all the time, then the failure rate would go up tremendously. Um, and also what I said before, the traceability, going back in time and see which component is failing in which car and what, that is also an important aspect of the automotive industry. Industrial market, it's not so big. We have industrial applications. Um, for us, it's important, but not really growing. Healthcare, important because people get older, they will get um, more medical equipment at home, but also with the doctors. I'm not talking about really the medical industry because there you need some certifications to sell your equipment. We don't have that. And to go in really for these certifications would mean an enormous investment. But there are a lot of equipment. There's a lot of equipment like blood pressure meters, like uh, electrical uh, thermometers, which are coming in households and the quantities grow tremendously, which means again, you cannot produce it manually. You have to do some kind of automation there. Computer and periphery. Yeah, I must say that that part became a little bit smaller as all the business, as all the industry for computer and periphery went away to the far east. Uh, there are not any, as far as I know, not any bigger producers of really equipment like PCs, like laptops uh, here remaining in Europe. I say Europe because this is the main domain, the main area where we are. It all disappeared. The same as with consumer electronics. When I was in Philips, we still hope to have uh, other businesses in the consumer, uh, other market in the consumer, but it all went away. There is something left in Eastern Europe, but most of it is in Japan, China, Korea, and maybe nowadays also in Vietnam. Telecom, a little bit, a little bit the same story, not completely. Um, mobile phones, there's no one producing mobile phones in the Western world anymore. Um, I have nothing against having customers in the Far East, but it is much more difficult to acquire them. And the, the way to do business with them is also another way of working than here in Europe. So I, I also don't speak Chinese. Uh, in that sense, we limit ourselves to the Western world. What is remaining here is the base station. If you have a wireless network, you need certainly for 4G and especially for 5G, you need millions of base stations. Now, who is producing that? Uh, Nokia, um, Ericsson. So there is a part of our customer base. And then last one, but very important nowadays for us, is the e-mobility, the electrical car. Cars will change from mechanical combustion motors to electrical drives. It is something which is linked to the CO2 emissions, which OEMs have to pay for. One, one push to go for that. The other push is, is certainly the, the, the greener thinking, which we all have to go for electrical cars. So this together is our market, but two thirds of it is automotive. And I'll specify this a little bit more and not too much, but you see automotive electronics, which was the start of the, our business in automotive. And that goes from, uh, for example, this is a, a drive unit, a control unit for the electrical motor, which is part of the electrical car. So there is power coming in and this is connected to the motor and it connects also to the wheels, which are driving a hybrid or a full electrical car. This is another example. It's just a small sensor this is the sensor which is placed as an option in most cases in the wheels of a car. It gives you the pressure of the of the wheels, so it is it is starts to send this information to the receiver in the car when you start to drive. Now, just imagine that there are roughly 80 million cars produced per year in the world. 100 million if you count also the the trucks and, and, and other smaller vehicles. Now that means 100 million per year is 400 million wheels per year. 
If every car would be equipped with this, if, which is not the case because it's an option on the higher end, but at least the wheels have to be produced, the brakes have to be produced, that means per day, roughly, uh, if you have the steering wheel, 300, 350,000 steering wheels per day. That means uh, 1.2 million wheels per day. Now you can imagine that these are quite some investments to produce all that. So there was the market for car electronics. I'll give you another example. If you have this short distance sensors, when you park, you have eight, park, eight sensors, maybe sometimes six per car. Now 100 million means 800 million sensors per year. These are quite some volume, and this is quite some production lines which we are also supplying to our customers. Info, <clears throat> infotainment, looking at the dashboard, looking at, which is nowadays also a computer. There is the infotainment, is the car radio. It was a car radio in the past, now it is a computer where the, where the radio is somewhere in the car and it's all connected. Telematics means you can telephone. It also has to be connected with the radio because the radio has to stop. Autonomous driving. <clears throat> It's the second, the second big wave which I see coming the next years that you will don't we not only will drive electrically but also uh, not not by steering anymore by ourselves. It will take still a while, and I don't think that it will be generally. But uh, on the motorway, I can uh, I can see that after a while you push the button and you you let the car drive to to the next big city. Fuse boxes, yes. Part of the car lighting lighting it seems it seems such a, 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 a small thing but nowadays it's not if you look at the lighting in the car eh, you can change the, the color of the car according to your mood again not in all the cars but it's coming more and more you can switch it to red to blue it's lighting you have lighting in the mirrors which which gives you light on the floor when you open the door you have lighting the front lights the front lights nowadays it's not a lamp anymore. It is a projector. It's a projector which can project in the latest version a complete video in front of the car on the street. In fact, you could play a movie on the street. They are not using that. They are not using all the features. But what is happening is that you can switch that it automatically switch on some segments in front of the car. This is a complex unit. Again, 100 million cars, 200 million front lights. Uh, of course, not all this complexity, and I have to reduce always my story to that to the real numbers. ECUs, which means it's controlling an electronic control unit of some functions in the car. There are several ECUs in a car. We are handling them. Engine management is also a neat kind of ECU. And safety and security, the airbags. There are multiple airbags in the car. If you crash, there is a sensor who detects the crash and then there is a small explosion and the airbag goes open. This has to be assembled. The same for mechanics. There are a lot of things mechanically still in the car, electrical, self driving or not, that will remain. <coughs> Important nowadays for our business, which is really ramping up, is the electrical parts in the EV, in the electrical vehicles. Hybrid cars, in fact, have also a separate battery, 48 volt. You have to charge that, the battery has to be controlled, the, the power of the battery has to be transmitted to the wheels. This is, uh, there's a lot of push, there's a lot of demand on new things in that area. For examples, I'm not, uh, I'm not showing you everything, but uh, you see the dashboard, you see here the, the connection to a battery, the front light, this, this, the small sensors, etc. We have a lot of these trophies in our showroom, but uh, I, uh, I will spare you the explanation of all of it. This is where we are. I've told you before, it's not that everybody does the same. We have some speciality. Uh, this altogether is about 870 people. And you see that we have uh, quite some locations in Europe. Uh, it's Genk, where, am I, where I, I am at the moment here in Belgium. Uh, we have 110 people in Belgium. It's not the biggest because in Germany we have about the two locations together is about 200 people. 
Um, so you see already where the focus and the market is. This it is German oriented, and of course that comes because there is a lot of automotive activity over there. We are in Spain. We are in Novar, Portugal. Important because Portuguese they speak also in Brazil. But Brazil is the country of the future, but we still hope that it will come. Uh, Spanish important because a lot of Latin America is uh, Spanish, so we have the possibilities to speak. And also we have an entity in Mexico, which can do, let's say, the, the lower cost solutions. Also in Atlanta, in the US, important because, uh, and certainly at the moment, because we believe that there will be a shift from production, which, which generally was done in Far East and then shipped to, to Americas that part of it, or let's say certainly the future oriented products will be created, will be produced again in US, Mexico. But we are also in France and also in China. China is a, a very big market. As I said before, we are not really targeting the Chinese customers for a lot of, a lot of reasons, but there are a lot of European companies producing there. And that is, is a potential market uh, for, for us. Um, so in total, it should be 12 entities um, altogether. This is, a, this is a, an extract of, uh, of customers, and I took here the automotive customers. You see that the, the OEMs, BMW, Volkswagen, Porsche, uh, the Skoda, and, and there are more. I just took some of them. And then you have the tier one. Uh, this is, the tier one are the companies which are supplying complete systems to these OEMs. A system is not only a component, but is a mixture of different components which can work together. And then we have, of course, the tier two and others. As I said, this is just an extract. I think we have uh, we have quite some uh, some more. I would like you to show you a video of a project which we did for the not automotive. It is it is a video for a assembly of a cream dispenser. I hope that the sound is not too high. Uh, oh, we, there's no sound. There's no sound? No. no I, I would like to explain a little bit in between and then can I can turn on the sound again. A cream, there, is, there, is, there are some, some uh, equipment, there's, there's an apparatus that you buy for the, for the bathroom which dispense automatically the soap on your hand if you put your hand in that in, in that machine. So that machine has a dispenser. The dispenser is the part in that machine which which puts the fluid on your hand. So in that machine there is a sensor, there is a hole, you put your hand in there and it dispenses cream on your hand. Now the mechanism to dispense the, the, the soap, the cream, whatever, and is produced on this line. This line is installed in France because France still has quite some uh, some industry for uh, for let's say medical you know, healthcare applications. And you see here some of the technologies what we are using. So and basically you see carriers pallets moving with parts on it, two per pallet. And then there are robots or pick and place units which bring parts on these pallets. You see, it's taking something and putting it on, in this case, this, uh, this, this pin. You see, and then the pin is pressed. And, and slow uh, process after process, this unit, the dispenser, is being assembled. Uh, it's turned, it's flipped over now. And uh, and so, in the sequence, it is finished. This can be a base, uh, the transport section and the, with the concept here, can be a base also for other for assembly of other products. So, to be clear, we are not supplying the products, we're just supplying the machine. The machine comes also with statistics, with information about the performance, about the quality. Uh, here you see the transport. Here you see a pick and place, put, putting the parts finished in trays. These are the trays. The trays are then, when they are full, then they are replaced and there is a new tray coming in and it's filled up again. So in this sense, 
a complete project is finished. We this is produced, mounted in our entity. The customer comes, does a pre-acceptance, and then we install that at the customer. Now, maybe a little bit more practical for us here in this team. We installed recently a line at Hella in Ljubljana. Um, this is a front and a head, a line to produce headlamps. So the lamps which I was talking before, now you see on the right side the unit, what is being produced, that goes then in the headlamp. And you see below the parts which are used to combine that to produce a headlamp. There, is, there are some, some screws in it, there is a heat sink. A heat sink means that it's a cooling unit, which the, head, the, the lamp becomes hot and it's, the heat is dissipated. There is a printed circuit board, the PCBA, that is a small printed circuit board, but not but really complex. Then there is optics in it and then the lens and then all together. Referring to the previous video, what I showed, you see here also again a loop, which can be the same kind of transport as in the previous video. And you see different machines around that. So every machine does something. And in the end, after testing it in total, you have this product which comes out of the line. So Hella, German company, we negotiated four lines, one in Slovenia. It is ramping up. It is at the moment being in, in the startup phase. Uh, we still will have to go there to finish the, 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 the problems. We were installing one in Slovakia, one in Czechia, and a fourth one in Mexico. And we already did the first one in China. And it's a typical way which customer, how customers look at us, and they say, yeah, IPTE, you, you do something, you, you're technically, you have the capabilities, but we have the advantage that we are on the different locations and the different continents. These are some pictures of that line, but that line was produced in Portugal. Uh, and, and by naming such countries, you see the international aspect, what we are doing, and uh, which gives us sometimes advantages, but sometimes also headaches. And this is the most important asset, what we have, is the people what we have. Without people, you realize nothing. And as I said before, it is not easy to find them. So if you have tips for people who want to come to IPD, I would be grateful to all of you. Now, not completely finished yet. This is IPTE. This is factory automation. This is my area. I want to give you a couple of words about Connect. Remember my initial history presentation was, we went together with Connect to the stock exchange. We were there together for about eight years. We stepped out as IPT as a privately owned company, and then gradually we acquired shares from Connect, and now it is a complete, a, uh, a daughter company of IPTE. I'm mentioning Connect to you at the moment because there are some interesting evolutions also here. What does they do? What do they produce? They produce electronics, printed circuit boards with a lot of components on them for others, not for, the, for others, not for us, but for customers. Customers who do not want to produce themselves, they go to a subcontractor and connect as a subcontractor. They assemble cables. It's not a simple cable, it's a cable tree. Suppose you have a lift, not a lift in a house, but an industrial lift. There's a control unit somewhere in the cabin of the operator and the motors and the control units are maybe 10 meters away because it goes up and down. This cable tree is quite a complex cable tree and that is produced also by Connect. The last thing what we do there is we build modules. For instance, for trains in every wagon, there is a control cabinet. They produce control units for Atlas Copco. It's an industrial customer. So if they don't want to produce it by themselves, IPTE Connect Group does it. We have, we are, we have the headquarter in Belgium. You see the map of, of Europe there. 
Belgium with two dots on it. So it's especially, it's only for Connect Group. So we produce mainly in Romania and in Czechia. In Belgium also, but it is more, let's say, the high-end part which we do in Belgium. So we are there on a, on a turnover volume of, you see, last year 146. We end up probably this year about 160, 170 million. So relatively to IPTE factory automation, this is an important piece. Now, what is what is the nice thing? Or what is the evolution? We just acquired, our daughter company acquired another company called Ecor. Ecor is a Spanish company with, again, three locations in the world. Ecor is in the north of Spain. They have a facility, a, product, a, a production factory in Mexico, where we are in the same location where we are in Guadalajara. And they have another location, another fa uh, production uh, facility in Shanghai, let's say 100 kilometers from where we are. So it is a good fit from locations, not that we will mix each other, but we can help each other. And the second thing is that with acquisition of Ecor, we come, we have the subcontractor, also in the possibility to supply to automotive. And there again is a big opportunity for the growth. I will not go through all this presentation of Connect Systems with you. I just want to show you some pictures where we are and what we do, and then I will close this. So Kladno, Czechia, is close to Prague. There we have about 200 people, mainly also the cabinets. Oradea in Romania, about 2,200 people. So it's, it's, it's quite a big facility there. There we do the medium and the high volume. So in total together, Connect Group has about 2,500 people. Markets, railway, uh, healthcare, infrastructure, automotive, industry, and defense. So the old Connect was more, let's say the market for them was more the medium mix or the medium volume also of, uh, of products produced for other customers. This is just a subtraction of, uh, of names of uh, customers, and you see them in a different area. On the left side is industry, and then railway, and then infrastructure, avionics, uh, automotive. Um, maybe the names are not familiar to you, but they are all names from the industry itself. I would stop my presentation at this moment. Uh, you can go to connectgroup.com for more info. You can also visit IPT on the website. Um, I hope um, I hope that uh, that you understood part of my message. I give the word back to you. Yeah, I can say loud and clear, Mr. Vladimir. Thank you for the fascinating presentation and uh, these impressive informative data, improving and focusing towards the clean tech and safety. Two important components. Congratulations, great technology and extended worldwide. Uh, I'm just going to give you some short questions and after that we're going to engage our guests uh, also. They, we, we will welcome our guests also to come with their questions. Um, Mr. Vladimir, as you said, you have worked in multinationals like Alcatel and uh, Philips 30 years ago. Then in 92, uh, you set up your own business. If you compare the situation back then, are multinationals even stronger today than they were then? Or did niche champions become stronger? What is your opinion on that? I must say that's an interesting question because it has a lot of aspects in it. I, I'm, I'm in that age that I can already compare and, and looking how industry sometimes is evoluting. But let's say I compare now the situation in Belgium now and then. Uh, Belgium is a small country, maybe a little bit bigger than Slovenia, but it is a country where in the past there was a lot of industrialization. Nowadays, the industrial added value in the brutto national product is less than 15%. Mm -hmm. It was 30%, it 
it dropped. Now, if I compare that to the south of Germany in Bayern, where there is a growing industrial activity, it is 25%. Now, is that important? It is, because there is added value. If something is produced, then the country gets also an income of that. Now, that's one aspect of it. If I look to the polit politics, because that is touching also this question, there is not so much interest in Belgium to grow the industrial initiatives. So industry is more or less dirty. Let somebody else produce that. That was the intention of the politics so far. There was a big Ford factory here beside IPTE. In the good days, 10,000 people employed, afterwards 5,000 plus, not to forget, 5,000 to the suppliers of that factory. Now, Belgium is a country where the salaries are relatively high. The netto is high, but the total cost for a company is times three. In Germany, it's also high, but the total cost of a company is times two. So, and you have not to forget, and it's important that I mention this, there is in Belgium a nice system which they call index. That means if the, if the cost of living goes up, then the salaries are automatically, without any protest, it's automatically raised. Spain has the same system, but the rest of the world, I don't think that they have that. It's always a matter then of negotiation. Now, at a certain moment, I can imagine, and also because of the union, the strength of the union here in Belgium, the, the, the board somewhere in Detroit decided why to stay in Belgium. If the politics is not interested, and if the cost is high, and there's a problem maybe in the output or in the market, yeah, then they closed for Kent. And it was not the first one that they closed. There were also some other companies in the automotive which they closed. Now, can you say, oh, what's the problem? Because it's a big company, what you ask, it's disappearing, but it never comes back because now Ford is doing better, but they are growing the, the factory in Spain, not in Belgium anymore. So Ford is not a Belgian company. We don't have too many Belgian companies or headquarters. We don't have big headquarters in Belgium. Maybe there is, there is Janssen Pharmaceutica, which is in the pharmaceutical industry. If you don't have the headquarter in Slovenia, then there is not too much interest from the owners, from the board of that company to stay in Slovenia. That is one message. Are they becoming less? I don't think so. But a big company is more able to move over the world, to go to countries where there is market potential, where the costs are good or better. I, I can only need to tell you that Romania costs are much lower than in Belgium. So there is a reason why we produce there. It is just a fact. So if Ford would be a Belgian company, probably the factory would still be here. It's, one, it's another aspect. The third aspect, which I would say, like to say, you said small companies, companies in a niche. Yes, Belgium has a lot of small companies, small growing companies. And why? Yeah, because the owners are Belgian and they still have good ideas. But I wonder if they grow up and they go international, if they will still produce in Belgium. So the niche companies are there. They are specialized in good things, which we are, which we were also in the past. We were specialized in some test equipment and production equipment. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me now again, would you restart again with the same yeah. dimensions as you have to restart in Belgium? I would say no. I hope, I hope this this gives a little bit an answer to this this question, but. Uh, I think we will stay in Belgium because we are Belgians. So how much you go back uh, personally, business journey, how much takes you back to Slovenia? As we saw, you already work on projects in Ljubljana yeah. with like models, yeah. Uh, yeah. but how much you engage with Slovenian Yeah, yeah I must say my, my trips in the past to Slovenia were more privately oriented. Uh, the country is, is, is beautiful. Yes. The people are very friendly. Um, 
Um, and of course, I have still a lot of family there, so I, I like to come. I always like to combine that. Um, nowadays, I see also because of this that there are possibilities also to do business in Slovenia. Now, mm -hmm. I will not forget. I will not forget to go there for leisure. Uh, but I'm traveling nowadays. Sometimes I did it already last year and the year before also for business aspects. So is that customers? Probably no, it was. But is that possible cooperations? If possible, yes, why not? Yeah, well, but uh, what do you suggest uh, to straighten cooperation between top Slovenia entrepreneurs in homeland and diaspora on different uh, global markets? Yeah, I think you, you give the example eh, by organizing this already to bring them together. Yep. I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful initiative uh, because yeah, we, we don't have also in Slovenia, I think there is industry and there is initiatives, but there is not a real cluster of companies which can group together. It's my impression, I can be wrong. Um, I would say the international aspect is absolutely necessary. You all have to speak English. Um, it, it, it sounds evident, but it is not always the case because the entrepreneur will, will speak. But in our company also, there are people in France who don't speak English. And these are technical people who have to work with technical people in the other countries. So speaking English, for me, is a must. Going to trade shows, it's a must. Be open internationally. Don't be afraid to go over the border. It is for us in Philips, it was almost all natural, but I still see around me here in Belgium a lot of companies who are afraid of the border. I think it's uh, you're, you're then a little bit out of your comfort zone, but yeah. this initiative will help that, I'm sure. But uh, as we know, also Slovenia company is very export oriented, but also very oriented towards some key markets in the neighbor countries of Slovenia. And, uh, yeah. Less and less, but still very close to nearby markets. So yeah. what, we, what could be done to diversify the market, especially for Slovenian entrepreneurs from the whole land, homeland, but also partially from the diaspora? Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned diversify. I, I wonder why should you diversify? You can also say, I, I specialize more and, and I promote that. The best promotion what Slovenia for me does is to, to present themselves, I feel Slovenia. The whole world knows Vlad. The whole world knows how beautiful Slovenia is. That is a perfect marketing aspect, what you did, what Slovenia did. So if you do that also for other speci specialities, I'm sure that you become a player international. And there again is this international aspect. So diversify, I think it's one aspect, but also for us here, we try to specialize our business in Belgium. We don't want to diversify too much. Mm -hmm. If you diversify, you need again, more people, other specialities, other risks. So my answer would be promote Slovenia in the same way like you feel Slovenia, but industry from Slovenia. Which are great talents around the, in Slovenia. And like you said, they should break the boundaries, uh, go out of the comfort zone and try to expand on uh, foreign markets. Uh, Mr. Dobosh, you're doing business in the industry of the future. What Slovenian entrepreneurs need to pay the most attention to when it comes to digitalization of business in the near future? Is there like, are we even aware of the dimension of change that awaits us? I'm, I'm, I'm always surprised man, about the speed where things happen. It is yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable if you walk in some countries and they know where you are just by face recognition. I'm talking now about China. You go there and they follow you. It's frightening from one side, but the other side, it's also unavoidable that this kind of technology comes in. It is, it, it, we can only say, and I'm part of the change. 
We can only say that the change will not decrease. It will go even faster. And the only way is to step in, but I would say to concentrate on certain aspects of that digitalization. We have a program here in IPTE to increase the security for cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is an important aspect. It's, it's not digitalization, but if you see what is happening there, yeah, the speed and sell of it's, uh, it's impressive. You have to follow it. My only advice. Good advice. Um, also, you visit Slovenia on your personal matters, right? So, as we all know, Slovenia is known also as a green cycling paradise. And it's one of your favorite hobbies as well. Did you ever cycle around Slovenia? And if you did, where? I, I'm 62. And the mountains in Slovenia are very high. <laughs> so I cycle around the lake. I cycle where the mountains are not so big. But I like to cycle because it, I, I need to keep moving. If you don't move, then you rest, then you, 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 you stand still. To be honest, I prefer cycling in Belgium. But I must say Slovenia has fantastic cyclists. Eh? I don't need to mention that. Eh? Congratulations to them. Mm -hmm. So, okay, thank you very much. So this is all from my part. And now we're going to open the meeting chat. So all the participants can interact with our guests with questions and comments. So please. Uh, uh, yes, if I can, if I can start. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dobosh, for a great presentation, mind-blowing company, which you uh, created. It's uh, it's fascinating to see uh, how successful uh, you can be um, in basically such a short uh, such a short time. Uh, so, from my point of view, um, we are in similar industry as well. Uh, so, I'm sure also other participants will want to uh, to know this. Uh, what could be the next steps? Because if we would have uh, a private chat, probably I would need two hours uh, uh, with you. Uh, in addition, to start discussion about the possible uh, cooperation possibilities. So, is there any way uh, that uh, that we can connect uh, with each other, and what would be the best uh, way to do that? Oh, I'm uh, I'm, I'm very willing uh, to to do that. I don't think we should do it now, but I would yes. suggest that uh, that we take in touch with each other, and and Matea will probably give you all my coordinates. Contact me, and we'll set up a meeting virtually at the moment, and then we can meet afterwards in uh, in your place or in, uh, in our place. I'm. I'm happy to, to have a contact with you. That's perfect. Thank you very much. So to get today, thank you, Dr. Knees. Today we're having guests from around the world. And uh, one of very special is uh, Sonia from Canada, from the company Adventist uh, Project Management. And uh, would, you, would you like to make comments or questions uh, live or prefer that I comment on. Hello. Miss Sonia, I don't know if she's still uh, among us. Uh, so what she writes here in comment is uh, which sectors uh, in, is in your company focusing on uh, predicting for future major growth areas in manufacturing? Another I, question. Uh... Okay. Yeah, we, we have we have uh, we have customers in Canada. Uh, we have even a, a service person there. It is uh, the customer is this company called Pioneer. And again, this is for automotive. Um, I think when if you go if you go to uh, to automotive, which is in the, in the south of Canada, linked to the north of USA and yeah, the Detroit big area, <laughs> there is always possibility to. Uh, to work together, and there is always interest from our side uh, to connect with with Sonia. In this case, uh, we can do that from Belgium, but we have also this office in Atlanta, in US, and they uh, they are very willing to to contact Sonia or that she contacts us. Matea, maybe you can <laughs> translate or give them the, the coordinates. Uh, let's let's talk again. I'm uh, I think it's difficult to to now in this bigger group to define. The, the possibilities. So I think it should be a separate meeting, but we are certainly willing to do so. Okay. So she Thank you. Had, okay. 
would you like to ask uh, personally? Uh, Achin, yeah, thank you very much. What, what a very, very good presentation and what a fascinating uh, company and, and uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us. I'm also representing the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce uh, in addition to my company, but mostly the Canadian Slovenian Chamber of Commerce and uh, we are very, very open to making the connections with companies like yourself and, and investors okay. and as well as uh, uh, professionals, but uh, yeah, the, one of my questions was about clean tech and the circular economy <clears throat> and your influence on government, because uh, I think a lot of the influence is coming from, of course, companies like yourselves. I, it would be great if you uh, if we could uh, have an influence on a certain level in, in official instances in, in Canada. Um, I, I think there are a lot of opportunities there. Of course, from our side, we see that from 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 Europe point. Eh? But so we need to to be to have a chat about the local possibilities. In that sense, it would be good if we could contact, uh, we could have a common contact. By the way, we also are working with Celestica in Canada. It's also a Canadian subcontracting, a big subcontracted company, and Vioneer is the other one. But I would say, behind this meeting, there can be follow up. Thank you very much. Uh, we see also um, Dr. Mr. Shale, uh, the founder of our organization, Slovenian Global Business Network. He would like to have a word. Thank you very much. Congratulations. I'm very, very happy hearing you because I spent 40, 40 years of my life in factory floor. And okay. uh, I think that uh, I, I was, uh, besides all the other activities in university, diplomacy, politics, and so on, I realized very much uh, doing something and producing something, uh, I think. And uh, every day when I come to the factory in the early in the morning at 7, uh, 7 a.m., uh, I never had uh, a long-term, I, I always had a long-term planning, but always come to the factory for short-term uh, short problems. So you have always a fun. You don't worry very much what will happen next because when you, you, you cross the door, you have always some situation that you have to solve. So I enjoy very much uh, uh, your explanation. Congratulations, you and your team. I'm very proud to hear this. And so about Brazil, we already talked and you know that you can count with uh, Slovenian, Brazilian uh, uh, and uh, Slovenian, Brazilian uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Slovenians in Brazil, which is a market which is very volatile, but anyway is growing up in some something. But I have another another suggestion that, uh, uh, as a, you, uh, Dr. Kness mentioned for you, uh, to you, and uh, that make a follow up what we can do in Slovenia or also with Slovenia, and we have a very strong Slovenian uh, community in US and Cleveland as well, and we have also strong community in Austria and Italy, which is Austria and Italy, uh, you didn't mention, you have the market over there, maybe to, to find the companies which are growing, which are producing, especially in Austria and especially in Slovenia. The, the, the Slovenian automotive industry is a big producer and big exporter. And also we have the Slovenian automotive uh, cluster. Uh, so uh, let's find a way that we put uh, more business to increase the business and the end of the year we can say, that uh, on your balance sheet and the balance sheet of your partners in Slovenia and abroad, uh, it's added up value. So thank you very much and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Stali. It, it, I appreciate the initiatives, what you're doing, and you mentioned in the initial words also, it's about business. I think it's, it's nice if we, if we exchange each other the information, <clears throat> and I appreciate that also, but in the end, yeah, we are, we are a group here of business people and it would be even very nice if we could increase our balance, as you said. And, and again, good luck with the, with the next sessions and the continuation of this initiative. 
I also want to thanks to Ambassador Dr. Rado Genorio who introduced us. That, uh, sometimes oh, okay. we are in Slovenia very critical of Slovenian diplomacy, but I have to say that uh, thanks to Dr. Rado Genorio, he is, by the way, my personal friend, uh, we know each other. And this is okay. this is very nice. Thank you. Thank you also. So, thank you, Dr. Sale. We have another comment here meeting chat from Mr. Martin Pecha. Uh, they're interested in some cooperation with your company and uh, okay. they're experts in optimization of logistics. Okay. So, uh, send the contents. Thank uh, you. Appreciate we, we have many congratulations. Uh, people are giving very positive feedbacks. Uh, if anyone else would like to ask or comment, please do. If not, I'm going to put, I'm going to give my word uh, to Gora Novković and I'm going to just say thank you, Mr. Vladimir Dobosh, for joining us today and being my co-host. Okay. Thank you, Matija, for uh, moderating this, uh, this meeting. Wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you all. Stay healthy. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank my, you. My, I will switch off my Dobosh and uh, Mrs. Uh, Peroshek uh, Chukini. Really excellent presentation, excellent conversation. I would add only one question, if I may, Mr. Dobosh. Uh, you mentioned uh, crisis uh, also, not this one, but the crisis uh, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, if you would point out the main difference regarding the prognosis, because you are connected to very different fields. Uh, what would you point out now when we are in the circumstances of COVID and post-COVID uh, economic crisis? What would you point out as a main advantage now or main risk? If you choose only one and one. I, 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 I'm looking now to, to our company. Our main advantage is we are in different countries. Don't forget that people from China cannot travel to Europe without any special permissions. At this moment, IPP people from Europe cannot travel to China. So what is happening, and, and these, these roadblocks are not only with China, but also between the countries. Uh, if, you, if, you want, if I want to go to, to the US, it's practically not possible. I can, but I need to overcome a lot of hurdles. Our advantage at the moment is we are in different locations and our customers come to us because we can install still in that country or even produce in that country where they have this facility. So close to the customer is a huge advantage which I see at the, at the moment. The risk, the risk, inflation, component supply. There are not enough, there is not enough components available on the market to produce what needs to be produced. Now, that will result in an inflation, maybe only for one year, that can be. But for me, that's the biggest risk at the moment. Super. But it seems to us you're an optimist. Uh, I need to be. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's part of my job anyway. And okay, after so many years, uh, there is always sunshine after the rain. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that when we stay agile as we were, uh, and that sometimes is, is, is hard to, to take because you also have to accept criticism, then uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that we will see the next sunshine again. Okay, Mr. Dobosh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today for excellent presentation and excellent conversation also to Mrs. Peroshek uh, uh, Kuchini. Uh, I would like also to thank you all participants for joining us today and of course Slovenian Global Business Network, our co-organizer, our partner. We started today something that can make Slovenian entrepreneurs stronger globally to continue to develop the new platform is our obligation now. Like I said at the beginning of this event, we will send you a video of the webinar. You are more than welcome to share today's video with people who might be interested in this topic as well. We will also send to all of you contact of our guest, Mr. Dobosh, for any further questions. 
And we will be glad to invite you to next common events of both organizations, Slovenian Business Club and Slovenian Global Business Network. You are welcome to join us in the future as well. Thank you all to be with us today. See you soon. Goodbye. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.